everyone, it's the War Hipster here coming at you with another Chaos Space Marines painting tutorial and today we are painting the Herald of the Plague God himself, Typhus of the Death Guard. Now he is a very, very, very nah, bad man. He's a very naughty boy. So I've been very excited to paint him. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're not going to beat about the bush any longer. We're going to jump straight in and we're going to start painting all of his armour. And the colour that we're going to be using first is Creed Camo. And this is acting as our pre-shade for when we do our slightly darker coat. So what we want to do is we just want to load up that brush. We just want to start painting this Creed Camo all over the top. Of his armor. Like this. Being very steady as we go, trying to avoid getting this everywhere. There's loads of little details all around him, but it doesn't matter too much if you do get it on somewhere where it's not going to be this green color, because you can always neaten it back up with some wraith bone, which is what I haven't mentioned, is that he has been primed with wraith bone. As you can see, there's little pustules just there that I've gone over. And so with all that Creed camo applied, what we're now going to do is going to create a roughly 12 parts contrast medium to one part Death Guard green mix. And this is because we want to create a really subtle thin glaze like that. You can see on my thumb, it just comes out very, very, very thin. And this is just going to apply a sickly pallor to all of that green that we've just applied. So let's do it. Uh, let's do it here on the, on the on the stomach. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start painting this glaze over the top of that armor, just avoiding any of the recesses and, if you can, any of the edges. But it doesn't matter too much if you do get it over the edges. Like there's that central one on the tummy that I've definitely just gone over. Definitely want to avoid the recesses here because there's a lovely and shaded with the Creed camo. Now this doesn't have to be completely smooth as a, as a glaze because we want to give it kind of we want multiple different kind of hues and textures and things in that armor as you can see like that it's just made it kind of a bit unhealthy looking similarly down up here on the shoulder pad I'm just gonna start painting this death guard green glaze over the top and with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to highlight all of that armor. Don't worry if it looks a little bit flat in places. We are going to shade it right down afterwards. But we're going to do the highlights first, and then we're going to do a glaze all over the top. With an interesting mixture to finish off all that armor. So, the color we're going to use first is Nurgling Green. We're going to have this thinned down on our palette. I'm going to take a small brush. I'm using a Wargamer Insane detail brush from the armor paint, Army Painter. What I'm going to do. I'm just going to pick an area to start and I'm going to start down here on the foot. I'm just going to start picking out all of those edges. Like this. And with that done, what we're now going to do is take a tiny amount of Screaming Skull. I'm going to use this to pick out the sharp edges on all of his armor. Like that, not doing the whole edge. Just having a bit of a spot highlight as it were. Like that, you see? I'm doing a little bit here on this battle damage. And you just want to go around picking out these bits. 
And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to put a glaze all over the top of all of that Death Guard armour. And the colour that we're going to make is a roughly eight parts contrast medium to one part Militarum green to one part Nasdreg yellow. We're just going to grab a fair whack of this on our brush. Uh, that sort of amount. Actually, we'll just take a little bit of that off so we don't lose control of it. And then we're just going to start painting this all over the top of our Death Guard armor, including all those highlights. All that Death Guard green, all that Creek camo. And what you can see, it gives you this kind of really lovely basically pre-highlighted sickly putrid green armour which is exactly what we're after it looks really horrible on the palette <laughs> <laughs> and with that done you should now have some beautiful well disgusting <laughs> death guard green armor like this so what we're going to do now is we're just going to work on all of his armor trim now this is going to be a slightly separate different type of metallic silver to the rest of the metallics on the on the model but we want to get this out of the way just so that it's done and then we can look back and be proud on everything that we've accomplished so far so the color that we're going to use first is iron warriors and what we want to do is got some thin down on our palette we just want to pick an area to start and i'm going to start down here on the leg and work my way up we're just picking out all of the areas that are as i say decorative style trim just on his armor now we're probably going to use iron warriors again because this is not the be all and end all of the metallics like i said we just want to get this bit out of the way and with that done, as you can see, I coloured in areas like the little chain mail as well, because this is the similar to the trim. There's all these just kind of little pipe connectors is here, and they're going to be similar to the trim as well. So otherwise, it's pretty much as you expected. Here we go. So what we're going to do next, just before we shade it and kind of start highlighting and finishing off these areas, we are just going to paint in the gold details on him. Don't worry about you know the big scythe we're just going to go for some of these gold details on him because we've got a couple of different shades of gold going on and we're also ignoring his helmet just for now now the color that we're going to be using is retributor armor what we want to do is take a small amount of this on our brush and just start filling in all those little areas that we want to be this gold now don't worry if it looks a little bit bright and blingy and you know clean we are going to be darkening it down in just a moment. We're doing this now so that we can apply the same shade across the silver and the gold and create less work for us when we get there. And with that done, what we're going to do now is we're going to shade all of that gold and silver that we've painted in with some Basilicanum Grey. What we're also going to do is we're going to use the Basilicanum Grey to add a pre-shade to any of the soft details in his armour. So like this bit here in his hand. There's definitely some around the back on his leg here. Gonna do all of this as well add that color in and we're also going to use this on any of the large ribbed pipes 
or even the small ones for that matter. So we're going to use this on the rib pipes. The soft details, the details in his armor. And as a shade across all the silver and all the gold. Just going to finish this pipe before I show you what's next. Like that. And then we also use to shade the silver like that. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some black Templar. And we're just going to use this to colour in those ribbed cables that we've painted with the silicon grey. as well as the soft joints in his armor. We're not using this on the metallics, just on these bits here. And with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna highlight all of those silver details with some iron hand steel. Just picking out every edge all of that silver like I'm doing here and with all of that iron hand steel applied to all of that silver it's starting to look nice and blingy so what we're going to do now is we're going to use some thinned down Sycorax bronze and we're going to use this to highlight all of the gold. So we just want to take a small amount of this on our brush and just start picking out all of the edges. Now this doesn't have to be a really kind of narrow, neat layer. It can be a little bit, not haphazard, but quite a thick highlight if you if you don't mind, or if you want to. Because what we are gonna do after we've done all of these highlights, is gonna add a bit more grime and dirt to all these metallics. So you just wanna go around, picking them out like that. And with that Sycorax bronze applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to use Canoptic Alloy. I'm going to use this as a spot highlight on all of the metallics. So we're going to be using this as a spot highlight over that gold there like that. And what we're also going to do is we're just going to use it to pick out the sharpest edges on the silver as well. Just to give it kind of a little bit of an impression of it kind of being a bright dirt, but it's still dirt. And then we're going to finish it off shortly after this. Well, sort of. <laughs> and so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to add a little bit of dirt and a little bit of extra shading to all these metallics. But we're also going to add this to some of that green as well. Now the color that we're going to make is a roughly six parts contrast medium to one part wildwood mix. And what we want to do is we're going to take a smallish brush I'm using a small layer brush from Games Workshop. What we want to do is basically want to take a small amount of this thinned down mixture on the end of our brush, and we just want to start picking out little areas that we want to add a little bit of dirt and a little bit of corruption to. So I'm going to do a little bit of it down here on this bell, for example, just kind of over the top of those highlights that we've already added, like this. Similarly, down here on this bauble on his leg. I'm going to add this over the top as well. Like that. I'm going to add some to the silver as well. Like this. So we're just going to go around picking out areas like that. Just to add a little bit of grime and dirt. Whereas on the green, what we want to do so I'm going to take a really small amount of this and kind of like inside any of these 
little areas of example we can add a little bit of this dirt so like the little pock marked areas similarly i'm going to add a little bit down here to this belly armor like that a little bit more kind of well contrast I suppose <laughs> like that take it up a little bit further and then for example around these rivets just want to add some more kind of deep shading to it and with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to add a little bit of verdigris and a little bit of, yeah, verdigris <laughs> to these uh, metallic center of the armor. And the color that we're going to use is Nihilac Oxide. And we just want to take a little bit of this on our brush, first of all. And we just want to pick areas that we want this to be. So I want to do some of this around the bottom side of this vent port here. Like that. I also want to run this into the recesses down here as well. Like this. And put a little bit of it on, a little bit of it in there, a little bit around here as well. Similarly around some of these little rivets, so just this one here. A little bit of nylon oxide. Like that, just going around it. Like so. You just want to go around adding as much or as little as you like. This step is pretty much optional. And so with that done, you'll be pleased to hear that all the green and all of those metallics are now finished. Don't put your metallic paints away though just yet because we have, do have the scythe and we do have his helmet to do. We're going to move those a little bit later on. So what we're going to do now is we are in fact going to work on the cloth. And we've got a bit here, a bit here on both of his arms. And we've got a bit round here on the back. Now the colour that we're going to use for this is the lupus pink. As we want to do. Take some of this on our brush. And then just start painting this all over these sections. Like this. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some Emperor's Children. I'm going to use that to highlight all of that Volupa's pink that we've just painted in. Like that. And with that Emperor's Children applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some full grim pink. And we just want to use this on the tips of those bits of cloth. Like this, just to give it a bit of a spot highlight. And with that done, all of that cloth is now finished. So what we are going to do next is we're going to work on the little bones and horns that are protruding from his knees. We're not going to focus up here just yet. We're going to, again, cover that in section differently. We're just kind of focusing on getting Typus himself. Then we'll do the destroyer hive and then we'll do the, start, the scythe. So we're going to work on these ones now. And this includes the little skull that's hanging from his belt just there. So the colour that we're going to use is Skeleton Horde. What we want to do is just take our Skeleton Horde on our brush and just pick one of these areas to start. And I'm going to start with the skull and we're just going to coat this Skeleton Horde all over the top. Like this. Yep. 
it might seem somewhat counterintuitive to not do all of the kind of bone colors at the same time. And normally you would be right. However, with a model such as Typhus, because there's just so much going on with him, he is one extra dude. It actually, it helps to just concentrate on getting him done in kind of sections rather than trying to do all of it all of the time because you will miss details if you try and do it that way so for example some of you might have spotted that that little locust icon there on his belt is now colored in the same way as the metallics and it's purely because i simply forgot to do it as i was doing it just because there's so many details on this guy and so with that skeleton horde applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to do something a little bit interesting with the co contrast paints. And that's going to kind of be a sort of a wet blending technique. Now, on the tips of some of these large horns, so for example, this one here, and the technique will be very similar up here as well. But what you'll notice on the box art is that they go from lighter at the kind of base point here to darker at the tip. And that's what we're going to try and achieve now. So the colours that we're using are skeleton horde and wildwood. And what we want to do is basically we want to take some skeleton horde like this or that kind of amount on our brush maybe just a little bit less it's a bit trippy and across the top part of that horn about halfway down we're just going to add a second layer of skeleton horde like that as you can see it's already a bit darker just add a little bit more like so. And then I'm going to wash my brush. I'm going to take a small amount of wildwood, like a dot like that. I'm just going to add it, whilst it's still wet, to the top of the horn. Just kind of feathering the two together, forcing it to move together. Now you could use a bit of contrast medium here, just to smooth things out a little bit more. But we're just, the detail is so small and so subtle here. You almost don't need to on these little ones. And with that done, what we now want to do is we want to highlight those bone details with some wraith bone. And with that highlight applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some wildwood. We're going to use this with a little strap holding in the skull. And we're also going to use it for his belt and the pouches that you can see on the back of the miniature. We just want to be really careful here. We don't get this wildwood all over the place. Just want to colour in these little areas. Up. and similarly on the belt you can just see it there poking through and with that done what we're now going to do is we're going to use some yandin yellow i'm going to use this in two places we've got these little boils just poking through his tummy and on his leg as well we just want to get quite a strong yandin yellow color over these sections it might take two goes. This really is entirely up to you. We just want to like that. Really make sure that that kind of the orangey shade of it is definitely present in those recesses. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to work on these cables going here and here and. I think that's it. Yeah, one and two. They go all the way around. Oh, there's a little bit of cable there. Uh, and we're also going to work on the nurgling clinging to Typhus's tummy. Now, the colour that we're going to make is a roughly four parts contrast medium to one part Gilliman flesh to 
to one part Magnus Purple. We're going to use this all over these sections. So let's start here on the Nurgling. Now we just want to very carefully paint this all over him, just avoiding that little tube there coming down. We don't want to overwhelm this because the Nurgling is quite, he's quite pale. So you don't want it to be like having really dark spots, which is why we use the contrast medium. We just want to control the amount that we're putting on here. And don't forget to do his little hand. As he clings on to Typhus. Like so. And of course, as I mentioned already before, we want to use this all over these cables as well. And then with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some Magos Purple. I'm going to use this in two different ways. The first way, you see this little tentacle down here coming off the Nurgling? We're just going to paint this all over that. Like that. And then secondly, what we're gonna do is wash that brush off. We're gonna take a small amount of Magos Purple. And then what we wanna do is we wanna add some kind of rawness to these cables. So we're just gonna add a little bit of Magos Purple around the recesses and in little patches around the cables and the nurgling. So I'm just gonna add it around this little lip here. Around where these cables kind of disappear into the joints. Similarly on the nurgling himself. So we use a small amount of this. like a little recess shade on his skin. And similarly to that, what we want to do is use a small amount of shayish purple, not very much at all. And we want to use this as a recess shade on that tentacle. Like that. Just going down those ribs and folds. And next up, we're going to use some Volupus Pink. We want to use this to colour in the tongue. that Volupus pink applied, what we want to do is take some Black Templar and very, very carefully run this Black Templar over the teeth into the mouth. And the eyes. Quick addendum to the last part, what we also want to do is we want to use that Black Templar on the ribbed parts that are poking through these fleshy cables. So I'm going to just go very steady here. Just 
add the Black Templar. Over these little sections. Like so. And with that done, what we're going to do is take some skeleton horde and use this on the horn of the Nurgling. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some phalanx yellow. We're going to use this in two places. So firstly, on those boils, what we want to do is we want to draw a little circle going around the outside of each of them. Like that. And then what we also want to do is we want to use this phalanx yellow to just colour in the dot of the Nurgling's eyes. Like so. So with that done, what we want to do now is take some wraith bone and we want to highlight the horn on the Nurgling. What we also want to do is pick out his teeth. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some thin down flayed one flesh. We're going to use this to highlight those cables and the nurgling. So we just want to take small amounts at a time. And on the cables, what we want to do is we want to basically pick out like the raised edges around those openings in the, in the skin. Like this. And we've got a little bit of a crease there. And here as well. Whereas on the nurgling, what we want to do We'll just pick out the sharpest points of him. Not that there are many on his fat little body. Look at him, he's so happy. Happy little Nurgling. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're just going to highlight the tongue on the Nurgling and the little, I guess it's his belly button cable, whatever you'd call that. A little tentacle and the color that we're going to use for this is emperor's children just to add a little bit of color to the proceedings like that and with that done what we're now going to do is we're going to use some flesh terrors red i'm going to use this for the smooth cable it's probably best if i show you here Smooth cable along this little bit here. And we're also going to use it on the two cables on his backpack under there. And with that done, well, the main body of Typhus is now finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on his helmeted head. So the color that we're going to use now is Corax White. I'm going to use this just to, one, tidy up any mistakes. So we've got a bit of green here on the helmet. But we're also going to use this just to establish a nice bright white color on the helmeted armor. Now we just want this on the helmet piece because the horn that you can see underneath uh, is going to be a kind of dark brown and then that's a metal sheath over the top. So we just want this on the helmet armor piece. We don't want to go all the way up here because we'll get a very weird color tone if we do that. So just adding this Corax white like this. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some apothecary white. 
I'm going to use this over the top of that helmet. And next up with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some thinned down iron warriors to paint in the horn, as well as a few of the mechanical pieces on his helmet. And we're also going to paint in the scythe blade as well, because the recipe is exactly the same for both of these sections. So we just want to paint in the horn, as I said. We're just doing the casing for the horn at the moment, not the actual demonic sprouting from his forehead. Yeah, he's a little bit shy about it after condemning his entire legion. Decided to, you know, protect his horn. You know, maybe not overly proud about yourself, are you, Typhos? Typhus. Callus Typhon. I was going to try and say both and ended up coming up with the wrong name. So we've got the horn coloured in and then what we want to do is we want to paint in this little plug here on the side as well as the vents up here on the head. Like that. And then we've got the mouth grill, to which I'm just gonna use a slightly smaller brush to do this. And don't worry about that little vent there, do that different color. as we go back to a slightly bigger brush we just start painting in the scythe blade as well and with that done what we're now going to do is we're going to use some iron hand steel but we're not going to use this to highlight what we're going to do is we're going to use this to create the initial kind of base layer for when we then shade it so that we get a lovely fade from a bright silver down to a darker silver um, so what we're going to do, and we're going to do this on both the um, uh, the scythe blade and on the horn. So we take this iron hand steel, thinned down on our palette as per usual, and just on the horn, for example, what we're going to do is we're just going to bring this iron hand steel all the way down to about there. So about halfway of the horn, and then we'll just carry that highlight round down the front of it like that thing. Anyway, on the scythe blade, we're basically going to do a very similar thing. What we're going to try and do is we're going to try and avoid any of these pock marks in the ru in the rusted metal like I'm doing here. So just kind of going around those recessed areas. We want to go all the way up to this large one here. And then similarly, that's kind of where this iron hand steel bit finishes. Just want to make sure that we get the underside as well. And so with that done, what we are now going to do is we are going to shade those silver details. Now, what we want to do is we're going to use two colors. We're going to use Basilicarnum Gray and we're going to use Fire Slayer Flesh. So what we're going to do is we're going to firstly just take some silicon and grey and just on these little bits of metal here on his helmet I'm just going to apply these like this over the top of those details. Similarly on the horn what we're going to do is take a small amount of it and we're just going to apply the shade all over the Iron Hand Steel and the Basilicanum Grey. Like that, so you can see already that it's working 
in terms of those two layers of metal going down. So we're going to get on the back. I'm just going to do it like that. And once again, down here as well. Cool. So with that done on the horn, what we're now going to do is we're going to wash the brush. And then we're going to take some fire slayer flash. And whilst it's still wet, I'm just going to add a little bit of this in amongst that. Just to give it a slightly brown, rusted look as it kind of fades between the two colours. Whereas what we're going to do on the side, is we're going to take fire slayer flesh first. I'm just going to start coating this all over this area <clears throat> to make it nice and kind of rusted and gross looking. Like this. And we want to take this all the way up to around about there. Like that. Then we wash the brush, grab some basilicanum grey, and over the tip of the spear, we add this over the top, like that. Again, we just don't want loads, and then we just want to, where the two colours meet, just kind of feather it together. And then with that done, what we want to do is we want to once again take some iron hand steel and this time what we're going to do is we're going to highlight along the blade all of the edges as well as pick out all of the kind of the battle damage the pock marks and we want to do this across the areas that are basilicanum grayed and fire slayer fleshed what we also want to do on the horn is just once again just brighten it back up. And next up, we're gonna use a little spot highlight of Stormhost Silver just on the blade. Because despite its weathered, disgusting appearance, the edges are still keen and sharp. with the Stormhost Silver. And next up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some thin down Rune Lord Brass to paint in the rest of these metallic details. So we've got this area here, got the little kind of weapon housing. Like this. We've also got this little button here. And we've got this area down here. And next up, we're gonna shade all of that Rune Lord brass using a mixture of six parts contrast medium to one part Agaros dunes to one part Wildwood. And for those of you who've watched my Necron tutorials, this will be very familiar to you. Because what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start painting this all over those Rune Lord brass areas like this. Just gonna watch for those massively dark pools that we've got there. We'll come back and lift those off in a second with a slightly cleaner brush. So we just wanna get this all over these areas like I'm doing like this. And next up, what we're gonna do is gonna once again use Rune Lord brass. And this time what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna relayer the flats of these sections to make them nice and shiny while just leaving any of those recesses nice and dark. Like that. And with that done, what we're now gonna do is highlight all of those brassy areas with some Canoptec alloy.
And next up, what we're going to do is we're going to use a small, tiny amount of Basilicanum Grey to effectively do a little bit of a recess shade on the helmet. And next up, what we're going to do is we're going to highlight that helmet again with some Corax White. And next up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint in that horn underneath the metal casing. And the color that we're gonna use is Skeleton Horde. Just being really careful around all that lovely detail we've now painted. And then with that done, what we're gonna do is take some Blood Angels Red. And we're gonna use this to paint in his eye lenses. Like that. And then next up, what we're going to do is going to rake a roughly six parts contrast medium to one part wildwood mix. And we're going to use this all over the wrap. On the scythe. With that done, what we're going to do is going to create a roughly one to one mix of black Templar and wildwood. I'm going to use this to paint in the black dead wood. of his scythe. And with that done, what we're going to do is we're going to use some black Templar on its own to just paint in the ribbed cables. And so with that done, well, Typhus himself is pretty much finished. So now what we're going to do is going to work on the destroyer hive and so the first thing we're going to do is going to work on these bone like constructs that are coming off his backpack and the color that we're going to use first for this is skeleton horde just want to get the skeleton horde all over these areas And with all that skeleton horde applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to add a little bit of extra shading to these bone-like protrusions on his back. Uh, but rather than using wildwood like we did down here, what we're actually going to do is we're going to be using Fire Slayer Flesh. Because these have got sort of almost a pinky tone to them when you look at the box art. So we're just going to take the Fire Slayer Flesh and then once again, what we're going to do is we're just going to be adding this in little places. Do you want loads on the brush? at once, just want to kind of add it in the recesses, and with that done what we're now going to do is use the wraith bone just to re-highlight the sharpest points on these bones, or whatever they are. They look like bones and horns, but who knows. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is move on and we're going to paint all of that smoke coming off of the d destroyer hive. Now this is quite tricky because there's loads of detail going on here. So don't be afraid to get a bit messy on here. Don't worry if you cover over the wings or the bodies of the flies and things, because it's just inevitable that you're going to, it's going to happen. Now we're going to be using four colors as we do this. And the reason I've got them all open is because that we're going to be using them all at the same time. And what you should also have is a pot of contrast medium on standby, which I forgot to open, just in case you need to thin down or smooth out any transitions. So the four colors that we're going to be using are Space Wolves Gray, Ethermatic Blue, Plague Bearer Flesh, and Griff Charger Gray. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with Space Wolves Gray. I'm going to start with this around here. on these smoke trails, like this, 
Just making sure that we get good coverage of this all over. Like that, going right up close. I'm going to take this to roughly about here, where this fly is. Do the same down here, going roughly up to there, where that fly is. Crap, we're done with the space force grey. So then what we're going to do is we're going to grab some griff charger grey and we're going to use this. the next bit coming up to reasonably close to where this big fly is like that wash the brush and then what we do is we take some ethermatic blue and we use this on the end To the Griff Charge Grey as well a little bit just by painting over it whilst it's still wet. With the Ethematic Blue. Let's have a bit around here as well. And then what we do is we wash that brush and we take some Plague Bearer Flesh and then we kind of add it in little sections across all of these colours. And what you want to do is you want to start at the end with the ethermatic blue. And then work your way back. So you want to kind of, let's put a little bit there. And then we're going to put a little bit there. And we're just going to work our way back. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to add a little bit of a kind of, just something to buff that color up on that smoke. And the color that we're going to make is a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Corax White and Fenrisian Grey. But what we're also are going to do is we're going to fill it down a little bit more than we would normally. So it's quite watery. It's not quite a glaze, but just like three or four drops of water would probably suffice. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to use it to basically add a bit of brighter colour to the tops of these smoke trails. Like that. I'm just going to keep going. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some Corax White. I'm going to use this on its own, I'm not mixing this with the Fenrisian Grey now. And we're going to use this to paint in all of the wings of all of the flies. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to colour in all of the carapaces and all of the bodies of these flies. So, we're going to start with all the little tiny flies, then we're going to do the medium-sized ones, and then we're going to do the big ones. So the colour that we're going to use first is Black Templar. I'm going to be using this on all of the tiny little flies, which is why I've got quite a small brush here, because all I want to do is just want to start applying this Black Templar over the top of the bodies of these little flies like this. We want to try our best to avoid the eyes. And next up what we're going to do is we're going to use Flesh Terror's Red on all of the eyes of all of the small little flies. Hey that rhymes. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some Apothecary White. And we're going to use this to paint over these small flies' wings. I don't want to use loads, I've got too much there. Just try and do this. And 
And next up, what we're going to do is we're going to paint these medium sized flies. So we're going to paint this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, any of the medium sized ones. Effectively, what we're going to be leaving just for now is this one, this one, this one, and this one. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using two colors. We're going to be using Ethermatic Blue and Plague Bearer Flesh. And what we want to do is we want to take the Ethermatic Blue and then all over that fly, the fly's body, we just want to paint this Ethermatic Blue all over. And we'll make sure that we get both sides. And then you wash the brush and then grab some plate better flesh and just go over the top. And next up, what we're going to do is we're going to use some Leviathan Blue and we're going to use this to paint in any kind of solid carapaces and things that you can see on some of them. So we've got like this little area here. On top of this fly. And we've actually got quite a large area of it up here on this top one. And next up, what we're going to do is we're going to paint in all the wings on these flies and the colour that we're going to make is so roughly six parts contrast medium to one part shyish purple mix to give us this lovely sort of thin purplish mix. And what we want to do is we just want to pick some wings to start on. We just want to start painting it all over. Like that. And then next up, we're going to use a small amount of Blood Angels Red. We're going to use this to paint in all of the eyes on those medium flies. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some Achillean Green. And we're going to use this on the remaining flies. And we'll just get this all over their hides. And don't worry if this is quite stark. We are going to darken it down. Don't you worry about that. And with that done, what we're now going to do is use some black Templar over the top. And this is just to, as I say, darken it right down. Now what you can do is you can try and avoid going over the edges with it if you like, like I'm doing here. But on some of them, that's just simply not going to be possible. And it doesn't matter too much if you do get this all over, because the Achillean green is bright enough. I'll demonstrate it on this one. It's bright enough that you'll still get a sense of that highlight still coming through. And with that done, what we're going to do is we're going to use some Flesh Terrors Red now colour in the eyes. And once again we're going to make another six parts contrast medium to one part shyish purple mix. And we're going to use this for the wings of these bad boys. And with that done what we're going to do is we're going to take some skeleton horde and we're going to use that to paint in the grub being carried just here. And with that, all that's left to do is to add a little bit of brightness to that, to those kind of areas. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a dry brush of scurry, Screaming Skull. I just want this to be very, very gentle here. So we wanna kind of hit the flies, the wings. We kind of wanna try where possible to avoid hitting that smoke. And with that done, Typhus, the herald of the plague god, is now finished. So all that's left to do 
is to paint in his base. Now you can do this whatever way you want to match the rest of your army, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna demonstrate it very quickly. And the color that I'm gonna use is Basilicanum Gray, but first I'm gonna remove that tiny little bit of dust from the end of my brush. And I'm just gonna use this Basilicanum Gray all over that rock. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some Retributor armor to paint in the skulls down here on the stonework. And with that done, we're going to use some Iron Warriors just to paint in this large tube here, but also any of the little metalwork girder type things, little pipes and stuff coming out of that stonework as well. And so with those metallics both applied, what we're now gonna do is use some Basilicanum Gray. Once again, just over the top of these metallics. Like this. And so with that done, it's now time to color in all that negative space. And the color that we're gonna use for that is Sterland Battlemire. Being really careful with the texture spreader once we get close to the model. Whilst that sterling battle mire is drying, what we want to do is we want to kind of poke some little holes and swampy gaps in in all of that texture paint, like I'm doing here with the texture spreader. And this is because we want to kind of really firmly place him almost like in the garden of Nurgle. And Nurgle's influence is really taken hold on this world where he currently finds himself. You can see I'm just kind of moving that Sterling Battlemire around to create some gaps. And once that's dry, it'll be a lot more obvious, but you can kind of see it from there. I've got a big one just here on the back as well. Create a little pull there. And next up, what we're gonna do is gonna dry brush all of that base with some Tyrant Skull. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some Dark Angels Green in all of those gaps that we left originally we did the Sterling Battle Mire. And next up with that done, what we're going to do is we're going to use some Nurgle's Rot over the top of all of that Dark Angel's green. And with that done, all that's left to do is to paint in the rim of the base. And now the color I'm going to use is some thinned down Corvus Black. And sometimes it takes a couple of coats to do. And lo, Typhus, Herald of the Plague God and author of so much woe in the galaxy, is now finished and yeah he looks disgusting in a good way of course that's what we're aiming for with the death guard uh not disgusting in a bad way that's, that would be that would be awful why would you listen to me then but um yeah it was a great experience to paint and it's us it's it's a really tricky scheme to actually get a handle on it's a clean plague green if that makes any sense um and yeah it's just it's, it's a really interesting challenge and one that contrast paints absolutely have risen to the challenge of and it was a lot of fun to do um yeah if you enjoyed this one and you'd like to support me further like these legends on the screen you can do so head to patreon.com forward slash war hipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash war hipster don't forget to like comment subscribe do all of that good stuff and if you'd like to stay up to date, make sure to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.